Hi, I'm Denny Somak, and this is The Rock Podcast. I'm a rock historian, producer, and best-selling author. This episode with Dave Mason was conducted a couple of years ago, right when the pandemic hit, and Dave was able to call in from his home in Hawaii. Now, I'm the executive producer on Dave's late 80s album, Two Hearts, which includes guest appearances by Steve Winwood and Phoebe Snow. So you know, we go way back. And Dave holds nothing back, especially when we get into what really happened at Traffic's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Here's a little background on Dave. He's a prolific artist in his own right and has collaborated with a list of who's who in the music industry. Jimi Hendrix, George Harrison, Paul McCartney, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Graham Nash, Stephen Stills, The Rolling Stones, Delaney and Bonnie, Leon Russell, Steve Winwood, Eric Clapton, and more. You might be familiar with his distinctive work on Jimi Hendrix's Electric Ladyland on All Along the Watchtower and Cross Town Traffic, The Rolling Stones' Beggar's Banquet on Street Fighting Man, Paul McCartney and Wings, Venus and Mars, Graham Nash, Songs for Beginners, The Spencer Davis Group, Give Me Some Lovin', and I'm a Man, and more. At the time we recorded this session, Dave had just restarted his Traffic Jam tour and had just re-recorded his classic debut album, Alone Together. We also talked about his autobiography, Only You Know and I Know, which will be released in September of 2024. So here is my conversation with rock and roll Hall of Famer, Dave Mason. <laughs> so, okay. So tell me, you've been pl- I know you've been planning this thing for a long time. You finally got around to it. You know, what's, how long did it take to do the new version? I don't know. It's within the last 10 years or eight years or so that I just started screwing around while I was living. Actually, it's longer than that because I did started putting World in Changes together back when I was living in Ojai, California. Right. And that's 15, over 15 years ago. So that's 15 years ago. So. I started playing around with my songs and, you know, did that, created that version of World and Changes and just been sitting on it. Um, and then just sort of thought about the, the Alone Together stuff was more or less a, I mean, it was more or less just for fun I was doing it. I really wasn't doing it for any other purpose than that, really. Right. Uh, and then we were on the road about, um, I'm trying to think, a few years, not too long back. Um, and um, I had a day off. And so we went in the studio with the band and just and laid all the tracks down for all the other songs that, you know, in a, I think maybe we took about an hour to do, do right. it. I mean, we played them live. So I had all, all the stuff and then, you know, it was just getting closer to the, um, well, there's 50 years coming up. Right. And um, so I started to try and piece it together and, and, and stuff. And we had it, <laughs> and we had it, we had it all planned eventually to actually, you know, I, I, I'd, um, I mean, you've seen, did you get a CD? No, not yet. Oh, Winifred. I would love one and I'd love one signed by you. Did you go grab it or something? How much are you going to charge me? Oh, a lot. It's going to be expensive, man. <laughs> it's going to be expensive. Um, so anyway, the point being is that I took, you know, I did, we had it, we actually had it all ready. Right. And I was ready to go. Um, eventually, got, I got talked into, well, you know, put the damn thing together and put right. it out. And then the other part about it, of course, is I do have a, a version of World and Changes that is the same arrangement as the original. Right. Okay. And also, by the, I think if you buy the CD, well, I'm pretty sure. If you buy the CD or you download the whole album, right? Uh, which is the Shell to BMG has the. I gave them all the digital rights, right? And so, but but if you either one, I, I think you can get a free. You you can go get a free download of if you want that version. No, Me, I want the version I, signed by you. Well, I, I, I put the new, I've, you know, I really thought about it and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I, I, I'm going to put the new version on, on this because it would, right. it's cool and it's now, and let me put something in there that's like, you know, right. Right. And, and it, cause it, it came out really cool. So it was like, what the hell? Um, anyway, so that's, um, 
And I was ready to go on the actual date. Right. Ah, look at that. Great. That's great. <laughs> Amazing how, how many people know that album from that there you go. Marvel so thing. This is CD, which is, of course, only available at DaveMasonMusic.com. Okay. Now, what now about this new version? Docking stuffers, folks, out there. Okay. So, you know, order a few copies. <laughs> and hopefully by January, hopefully by January, um, I was hoping I, but I mean, I'm just, you know, a small guy against all the big companies. Uh, by January, hopefully there'll be um, a limited run vinyl. Oh or, boy. Is it going to be the, you know, the it'll all be, yeah, like the marble. CD. Yeah. 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 I know you get asked all the time about that. Was that an accident or was that on purpose? You well, I was still controlling the colors in the in the press, so they 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 all came out different. Right. You Amazing. Know. Let's talk about some of the other stuff you did. You put out feeling all right. Um, is that just a one off? The video and and or is it a download? What's the story on that? Yeah, you can get the. There's a you, I, the the. The audio is is you can you can get the download right, yeah, okay. So by the way, I, I saw you with uh, it's on the always it's always there for viewing on my website. There's, a, there's some cool stuff on my YouTube channel. Right, when you go to DaveMasonMusic.com, I will be saying, that. I'll be saying that a few times during the interview. Oh, not a problem, Dave. <laughs> by the way, if we do a video, we'll we'll do a crawl across. But I know you will. Uh, <laughs> Did you put that great video with you and Phoebe Snow on your website? You know what? Actually, um, what I need is if you have a copy. You need I, a copy? I, I don't have it. Okay. If you right. got, if you can find it for me, Denny, and let me and get me a, a, um, a link to it, then I could. Yeah, that'd be great. I should. I, of course, I, I would love to have it up. There. Yeah, it's called the dreams I the dreams I dream. And right. it, was, it went to number right. 11 on the adult charts when it came yeah. out. It's a great yeah. song. You know, I meant to ask you, because most people probably don't know this. You had a lot to do with discovering Phoebe Snow or playing her with her first album. Or, what's the deal there? How'd you get to uh, my, my My first wife, Lorraine, um, got um, turned me on to Phoebe. Okay. She happened to be, in, be when she first got gone and, um, was out there in, in LA in Hollywood, right? Uh, did you and, play on the first album, right? Yeah, I, yeah, actually, I am. I, f I don't know, I forget what track. Um, but that's kind of how I first met her was out there, right? Yeah, and then I, you know, I just so, so stayed friends, you know, up until when she passed, right? Right, right. So, I, um I saw you, last time I saw you was with Steve Cropper. That was an amazing tour. And that recording is available at DaveMason.com too, that right? That show mm -hmm. is, is, is available. Yes, it is. That was a Absolutely. great show. Absolutely, it is. It was, it, it's actually a pretty cool CD. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the remember. woman you had uh, singing on that? Gretchen Rhodes. Okay. Um, is she still working she, with you? No, not really. She lives out here on Maui. Right. Now, you, are you in Hawaii or are you in uh, Nevada right now? Uh, I am in Mau. I'm in Hawaii. You're in Hawaii, but you go, still go back and forth or you spend all your time in Hawaii now? Still spend uh, time in, at Reno? Uh, or wherever uh, we, with the advent of, um, of the pandemic um, yeah. and the fact of the matter that, you know, as of March of this year right, and as of God knows when, right. you know, I got no money coming in, you know, I'm right. Yep. So I, we, we figured, you know what, we need to, um, we need to, we need to move some assets around. Right. <laughs> and right. decided that, you know, we weren't in love with it. And, and, and just for now, we let the Reno place go. Right. And why not? I mean, the, it, it's, it, it's, an, it's a crazed seller's market. Right. Uh, Right, sure. And in Reno, for sure, it was. It was like it's nuts. The first people that came in, you know, they gave us the asking price. It was nuts. So it was like, well, what the hell? Jeez. And then we're going to just come over here. I mean, thank God we have this place. We're lucky. I'm blessed. Right. To be able to sit this out in, in a place like this, you know. 
But as of now, I mean, I don't know when, you know, we'll go back to work. I mean, UTA, which is my new agency, is they're kind of hoping and planning. Right. June, July, you know, hopefully. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Um, can't wait to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, it's a, it's it's a it's a lot of you know. There's a lot of background people that are just right. struggling their ass up here. Road right. crews, you know, all that stuff. It's, right. it's a, Okay, so I, I obviously, what are, I, are you working on a book? The book is. Uh, I remember years ago you told me your your mother had started a scrapbook. Is that what started this project? No, 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 no. She she keep a scrapbook anyway. No, 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 no. My, my that's just from from Facebook fans and the fans, right? And and my wife and everybody. Right? You should write a book. You should write a book. Right. Well, I'm sure you got some good stories. Book and I'm like, what's wrong? What? Write a book. Why? What the hell? So eventually I got badgered into writing a book. Okay? Right. So we're writing the book. I'm doing, doing it with a co co writer, right. Chris Epting. Um, real nice guy. Great researcher. Because right. thank God, because places and times and stuff. Mm -hmm. Forget it with asking me, you know. Right. Uh, when you're writing a book is when you go, you say, and I wish I'd have kept a diary. <laughs> right. Right. I don't know every minute half the stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's uh I mean we we should be finished in January, hopefully by the end of January. You have a title? Only you know and I know. Oh, of course. Except now I know better. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, so you, you think it'll be after the first of the year, you'll be done or? Well, it depends, you know, I, I mean, everybody's kind of shooting for, they were all starting out shooting for that, you know, like may, a, a quote major publisher sort of thing. Right. But the reality is, you know, it's, I have to really get into this. I mean, if we finished it in January and we got it to somebody, Right. It wouldn't be, it'd be 2022 before this thing right. ever came. That's right. That's right. And screw that. I'm I'm going to be 75 in next May. I'm going to put it out yourself. I ain't got time to wait for that nonsense. That's right. Anymore. Besides, so like the record done. business, they give you an advance and you got to pay it back. So who needs that? <laughs> yeah. No. No. So I think we're going to sort of, but th there is a boutique um, publisher that wants it. Right. With a lot more free and and the ability to. See, I, if I'm going to finish it in January, right? Then I'll, I, by the time we all go back out on the road, right? I want it to go. You know, yeah. I don't want to sit around until 2022. Do it yourself and take it as a have it on the on tour to sell. Well, we're, set, we're, we're we're set up to do that, and I will do that. But right. but I but I but I've got like I said, there's there's a boutique publisher that's very that Good. really wants. It. Okay. Uh, and to have somebody deal with all that other right. stuff, and deal, right. but be able to, you know, get it out They'll there. They'll be able to get it out faster, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, where's it going? It's going to say Amazon. It's going to, you know, say, they're all going the same places, right. for Christ's sake. Right. So, uh, some, so the bigger ones may have better, quote, shelf positioning, yeah. but, you know. And what about uh, a documentary or some sort? Have you been approached about that yet? <laughs> it's out there. There's a, the, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's been out there being pitched. I just, at this point, don't seem to have, I just don't seem to have enough cachet to warrant the funds. <laughs> and uh, and who's, uh, who directed it or produced it? Or? Well, I, well, right now there's this real group in LA that's been interested in doing it. Yeah. But, um, but I ain't interested in just slapping something together. Right. For a couple of hundred thousand dollars. That's, I'm right. not, I'd just rather not do it. Okay. I mean, one of the best ones so far that I've seen is the um, is the um, ah ZZ Tell Top. Me what watching what? The best one so far that I've seen is the ZZ Top. Oh know? right, yeah, that is good. And there's so many of out there, so many good ones out there. And so that's the one. I, I mean, that so something like that. You know, I mean, that's. It's a little more than a couple hundred thousand dollars to make that. So. And does it have a title? 
Is this one called feeling all right? <laughs> it's probably, you know, it'll be feeling all right. Why not? What the hell? The Dave Mason story. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'll make some inquiries for you. I mean, I suppose looking at it, you know, just try to step back objectively. Yeah. Um, there's not many, if any, people left. Yep. Who've been there as long as I have. Right. And that have probably played with more significant artists. And still able to talk about it. And still able to talk about it. And so, you know, that. For that reason, you know, aside from the personal um, side of one's life, you know, which right. is also for me part of the book, right? Um, it's, it makes for an interesting story. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> but I'm sure. but so far, you know, nobody's stepping up to the plate. Right. So, have you heard anything from uh, Winwood these days? What's going on with him? <laughs> What's he up to? Have you heard from him? He... I Winwood. Yeah. When we doesn't talk to me, when we just, just well, there's still a chance you guys will play together again, right? Come on. I really doubt it. Last, com last comment, which was about four or five months ago about doing this would be, uh, was we, uh, we, oh, we have, I mean, aside from all the comments that he's made along the way, like, you right. know, I was nothing more than an invited guest in traffic or, yeah. you know, this and that that his last comment a few months ago was, well, no, we're, we, I, we have totally different musical tastes and, and I'm putting a new thing to it. That was his thing. So right. Just, it's all bullshit. Okay. But a traffic reunion uh, or a... Well, you if know, you and he get together, that's a traffic reunion. Yeah, well, it would be, it would be hugely successful, but, it, but that doesn't seem to want to sway anything. For some reason, I don't know what his stick up his ass about me. Yes. I never have. Other than I wrote the hits. I know, I, I, was, I was there. I know you probably don't remember because it was a crazy night. I was there when you got inducted into the Hall of Fame. And oh. I was there when Paul <laughs> Schaefer came and that whole kerfuffle and you refused <laughs> to play on Dear Mr. Fantasy because he wanted you to play bass and you didn't do that. And then Paul Schaefer said, hey, let's do Feeling All Right. And they ended it with that anyway, correct? Yeah. No, no, I mean, I was going to get up and play. I just didn't want to play it was like, well, we're going to do it just like the record. And I, from that point, is, you know, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, what we, right. I thought we'd do a couple of songs or something, but it came down to one song. Right. The Winwood Camp dictated the whole process we're doing. Dear Mr. Fantasy, and I never spoke to him. It was always right. Emissary is talking to me. We're going right. to do Dear Mr. Fantasy, is how it all came down. We're going to do Dear Mr. Fantasy, and we're going to do it just like the record. Right. And I'm like, Wait a minute. That's I was 19 years old when I did right. that. I was like fucking nearly 70 years. So right. or 60 odd. And I don't play bass and I haven't played bass in years. Right. We've got one of the greatest bass players with with here in the um, um what's his name band. Um, oh, yeah. right. I said, let's use him and I'll just play acoustic guitar. Right. Right. I'll play rhythm. No, that ain't gonna happen. Right. Oh no, originally I said, no, we'll, we'll get up and I'll, you and me will just get up there with electric guitars and just right. fucking let it go. That ain't gonna happen. Uh, okay, I'll play acoustic guitar. Right. That ain't gonna happen. This is, this is quoting, right. I'm quoting, yeah. I'm not paraphrasing. Right. So I just said, you know what? Fuck it, you guys, you go, to, you go ahead, play, get up there. Right. The best part, of and everybody, even Ahmed called me. Right. You know, they're and making a movie of his life. Well, they should. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wanted to be Ahmed. Yeah. There's not one record executive in, in the industry that did not want to be Ahmed. Well, he was he was probably one of the greatest. I mean, no quite he was a real music guy. He was a great rogue. <laughs> yeah. A well dressed too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look forward to your uh, to your book. Uh, maybe we'll do something with this documentary. But basically, you're gonna be out as soon as things get back a little to normal. Hopefully, you're gonna be on the road. You're gonna be doing a lot from this album, right? What uh, who you taking your regular band? You got any additional people with you? 
No, I mean, I'll probably go out and do that, do just this. I mean, I was actually talking to, uh, with because uh, I did a little Facebook thing with, with, with Bonnie Bramlett. I saw part of that on Facebook. Yeah, that was, that was great. And I thought, mate, we were talking about me and her going out and doing a little storytellers thing. That would be dynamite. Yeah. So that would be, that'd be kind of fun to do. Yeah. So I'm going to see if, if that we can make that happen. And other than that, you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> just getting, <laughs> just getting back out there, getting back to work. Yeah. <laughs> see how that goes. I've always been a fan, Dave. I'm a big fan of your work. Always love to talk to you. Thanks. All right, Dave. Thanks All right, Danny, thank I appreciate you. it. Yeah, great to talk to you. All right. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. That's it for this edition of The Rock Podcast. We're available on all the usual platforms, wherever you get your podcasts. And we have a video version on YouTube as well. You can also sign up to our channel, and you'll be notified when a new episode is released. It's free, no charge. The Rock Podcast is now the number one podcast for classic rock. So thank you for listening. Find us at the website, therockpodcast.com. And we also have a Facebook page. You can send your comments, questions, and suggestions to me at hello at therockpodcast.com. That's hello at therockpodcast.com. I'm Denny Somek, and that's it for this episode. Ha, 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 ha.